Ms. Parker had been on her case every time they'd have a meeting. And finally at the last one, Ms. Parker says, well, you know you're going to get killed, don't you? And Bonnie Toler says, yes, but life without Clyde would be meaningless. They were just a couple of normal kids that got off on the wrong foot. Clyde would be a 7-Eleven bandit and Bonnie would be a groupie. She was along for the ride. Bonnie never shot anyone. She was along for the ride. That was the instructions that they were under. Smooch Med was quite explicit about that. Bring them in, alive if possible, but take no chances. Clyde, if you hemmed him up, or if you snapped on him first, you had a war on your hands and the little man knew how to wage war. He told me, he says, son, he says, after that sour deal, I realized that all bets were off. That the next time we met, one of us was going to walk away from it. And that proved to be prophetic. So they got themselves a bunch of sandwiches and cold drinks and everything and went down there and camped out. Cars off back in the woods, six little ducks lined up in a row, about 15 to 20 feet apart. And they were there for two days and two nights. They knew that one of three things was going to happen on that road. That either Clyde and Bonnie were going to come in or go out or Henry was going to come in or go out, or old man Methvin would come out or go in. Up until that point, they didn't have a trap. Because if Clyde had come along driving at the 70 to 90 mile an hour that he always did, they'd have had skeet shoot. But old man Methvin didn't realize it, but he unwittingly and unknowingly gave them the key to the lock of the trap. Ted said that the tension was so high that if a gnat had farted at half a mile, somebody would have triggered a shot. Because when Clyde comes up, Alcorn hails him, halt the law, Clyde's head goes up, Bonnie screams. Prentice Oakley popped off the first two rounds. He swore later that he saw a weapon coming up over the window sill. None of the other five did. Ted said one thing ran through every one of the officers' minds at the same time. This clown has gotten out of 11 traps. Is this number 12? And with that, everybody unloaded. And Ted was the first one to the car. He couldn't get Clyde's door open. He cut the ignition off. He jumped over the hood of the car, <coughs> pulled the door open on Bonnie's side. She fell out and he caught her. And he told me, he says, son, when I caught her, she was breathing. By the time I gathered her up to put her back in the car, she wasn't. There were a couple of kids that fell in love after Clyde had fallen off the wrong side of the law fence. They loved each other ferociously. They loved their families ferociously. They were both mother fixated. He says, we've been through hell. He said, we've been road hard and put away wet. He says, it wasn't fun. We were doing our duty. A 
Uh, he says, we knew our duties. We were to bring them in alive if possible, but take no chances. That it's a love story. Clyde and Bonnie loved each other with all their heart. And Bonnie, Clyde had asked her three different times to leave him. She wouldn't. Miss Parker had been on her face every time they'd have a meeting. And finally at the last one, Miss Parker says, well, you know you're going to get killed, don't you? And Bonnie told her, says, yes, but life without Clyde would be meaningless. <laughs>